in case any of you are curious about how some of the ideas come to me for videos, I was watching Steve Gutenberg, by the way, a channel that I uh, highly recommend. The uh, This is one in which, uh, by the way, his channel is called Steve Gutenberg Audiophiliac. He calls himself the Audiophiliac. And he's been doing, uh, he, he's on CNET and a very well-known reviewer of uh, all things audio. At any rate, I was watching this video uh, entitled, First I Listened to a $250,000 Amp, Then a $33 One. And actually he's showing two there, but the one that uh, that is $33 is this one that's, uh, that he's holding straight to the camera. And it's a Kittner uh, 2020A. But I was watching this and it occurred to me that, you know, I had never tried any of these and I'm not trying to replace uh, uh, John Audio Tech. He does the much better reviews on these things than I would do. But it did occur to me that uh, I might like to get one of these. And so I did. And at the same time, I was also thinking about this video, which uh, was done by Blue Glow, in which he is resurrecting the audio analyzer suite that those of you that uh, may remember that far back, uh, I had uh, put out a couple of videos on using this suite some time ago, I don't know, year, year and a half ago. Uh, and uh, Blue Glow had seen it, and uh, uh, Mark is his name, but the Blue Glow Electronics is his channel. He had seen my videos on it, so he got it and uh, bought an analog discovery and, and did a bunch of things. And then a little bit of a disaster happened, and the, the fellow who was had written the software, uh, suddenly it just disappeared. Well, recently it has reappeared. So for those of you that are interested in the audio analyzer suite, which you will see in a few minutes, I suggest that you stay in touch with Mark at uh, Blue Glow Electronics because he is uh, much more into this than I am. To me, audio is a bit of a sideline. For him, it's, a, uh, it's right down his alley. So he's resurrecting the audio analyzer suite, which I understand is now still available, although my copy always has worked. But I do realize there was a lot of frustration and, and quite frankly, some, some pretty angry emails, to, at least to me. I don't know if uh, Mark got these, but I got some pretty angry emails about people. Well, let's just not go into all of that. At any rate, they weren't happy. Uh, because apparently some of them ordered analog discoveries without downloading the software and then when it went away uh, they couldn't download. Anyway, you, you get the idea. So what is all that about? Well, the my amplifier has arrived and as you can see there, next to it is the analog discovery. So what I'm going to do is fire up the audio analyzer suite and run it on this amplifier and see what it, uh, what it does. And here is the results, at least the first result, which is the frequency response. Now, I'm running the suite from uh, its default range, I think, at least that's, that's the range it came up in. So. Uh, I suspect it's the default. It's from 10 hertz to 50,000 hertz. And as you can see, so 10 hertz would be here on the left and uh, 50,000 hertz would be on the right. The uh, blue is the left channel, the red is the right channel. And by the way, I've looked at some other reviews and they, they have this same issue. There's no balance control on this amp and the two channels are not exactly balanced. Now this is uh, 0.12 dB and this is 0 uh, 0.86 dB, so we're talking about half a dB difference between the two channels here or less. But at any rate, they are not uh, exactly 
uh, the same and you'll notice that when you get to the high frequency end the left channel is actually puts out uh, more at uh, 20 kilohertz than the right channel although for most of the bandwidth the right channel prevails and the crossover is at about 12 uh, kilohertz for those of you that are interested in the numbers but basically the idea is it produces this kind of uh, frequency response and there's no balance control so you can't really put one on top of the other I could adjust the inputs by the way I've swapped both the load resistors that I'm using which is a seven and a half ohm load resistor uh, it says this unit will work from two to eight ohms so I use seven and a half ohms and it, it uh, is also, uh, I, so I swapped that. I also swapped channels of the analog discovery in case, now of course the, the input, the waveform generator, I'm just uh, tying that to both channels. So there's no differences there, but I thought maybe for some reason one of the scope channels might have more gain than the other, but it doesn't. The analog discovery is spot on, it's the amplifier that shows this difference in, but it's not a big deal. Uh, in, in listening tests it doesn't show up at all. So uh, that is the response. Now I'm going to turn the bass and treble up all the way and rerun it to show you what the effect is of the, uh, and by the way the, the Kintner K-I-N-T-E-R K-20 20A plus is the model that I'm actually running here. And here you see once again there's a difference uh, disparity in the uh, output of the channels but basically the same sort of uh, same sort of response. Now I'm going to turn the bass and treble all the way down by the way, there's only three controls on this amp other than the power switch. A bass control, treble control, and a gain or output control. I have the gain control set to about a quarter of the, of the total. Now we'll run it again. Remember this is with the bass and treble set to a minimum. And as you see, once again, the left channel puts out less than the right channel. Notice that this, uh, the, the spikes appear to be different. Now I'm going to go back to the midpoint on each of those and I'm going to engage the filter. They call it the tone switch and run that. I'm not sure exactly, this didn't come with any instructions, so I don't know what they mean by the tone switch, but I'm assuming what they mean is uh, it cuts the highs to, uh, some people prefer a lot of boom in their uh, in their box, and, <laughs> and so I think this is for those people that want to cut the highs so that it, they emphasize the lows and uh, and so on. Well, actually that's not what I was expecting, but at any rate, that is what happens with the tone. Now I'm going to turn it off and run it one more time so you can get a comparison there. Okay, back to kind of where we were. Now what I'm going to do is run a harmonic distortion versus frequency plot of both channels. And here is the plot that I get of harmonic distortion versus frequency. This is a tenth of a percent right here. This is one percent up here. And as you'll notice, as you get out to around 10 uh, kilohertz, the, uh, it starts to approach one percent, but it stays below one percent all the way to 20,000 hertz. This is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, so not going quite as low. Uh, I guess I could could do that. Let me change this to 10 and rerun it. And see what it does at the low end in terms of harmonic distortion, but I suspect it's going to uh, it's going to be pretty good if I remember right. 
Yeah, it's higher. It's about 1% at, uh, or about half a percent at 10 kilohertz. And then it goes down to uh, around, well, less than half a percent. I'm telling you wrong. This is a tenth of a percent here. Well, now down here, it moves it. This is a tenth of a percent. So the distortion remains below a tenth of a percent all the way out to around two and a half kilohertz. And then it begins to climb steadily and but doesn't quite hit one percent even near the end. Now, this is not intended actually to be a review of the uh, Kentner or Kit, Kentner Kent. 2020A. It's more just to show you, uh, in case you're interested, how how I come to make videos. And I, I do a lot of playing around and experimenting and uh, toy shopping and so on that I don't t uh, put on video. But this one I thought I might because it does show you how sometimes you're watching something one place, you get an idea, it triggers you to do something else and so on. Now I'm going to do the harmonic distortion plus noise versus power. And you'll see on the chart there, the, the green is the power. And it's going from uh, 10 milliwatts to 10 watts. And you notice that the distortion remains below a tenth of a percent. Uh, well, this is, yeah. This is 1 volt RMS, so that's 10 volts RMS, uh, across a 7.5 ohm load in this case. Uh, well, let's see. I need to change the uh, load impedance here to 8 ohms and rerun it. I should have done that earlier. Okay. And there you see, this is a tenth of a percent. And you see the distortion starts out a little above a tenth, but, but nowhere near one percent, which would be way up here. And then runs roughly, oh, about well below 0.5 percent for much of the range, and then rises again as the power level goes up again. Okay, now what is the, uh, what's the whole point of this? Well, first, it's for those of you that aren't watching Blue Glow Electronics regularly, it's a suggestion that if you're interested in the audio analyzer suite, that you watch his channel, and, uh, and yes, I'm sure he inc will encourage you to subscribe so that you can keep up with this. I don't intend to follow this, and I certainly don't want to do anything that causes people to go out and buy something and then blame me later. Uh, I, I've been there, done that, don't even want the t-shirt. But what I would like to do is to, for those of you that are interested in the Audio Analyzer Suite and the Analog Discovery 2, to let you know that Blue Glow is resurrecting this. Apparently the original author, I think his name was Jake, uh, has made it available again. The only thing that I would say as a, uh, as a kind of caveat, let me swing around here and uh, show you the amplifier again, is that when you're, when you're doing things like this, First, be careful about how you download the software. I looked at the sites to where, where you can download the new software. Now understand, I don't need to really change mine because my original is still working fine and I'm not going to, I don't use it that much that I want to download the new software. But just be careful that uh, if you don't know what you're doing, that you have someone advising you on what to do because some of the sites that the software, uh, at least some of what I saw, well, let's just put it this way. I wouldn't feel real comfortable downloading from some of that, from some of those sites. They have a history of uh, 
uh, people planting uh, malware on the sites that gets downloaded. And so uh, certainly I wouldn't put it on my on the same computer I used for, for online banking or anything like that. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the end of this video. Let me wrap it up. It's gotten a lot longer than I really intended. But uh, I did want to show you this neat little amplifier. Sounds great, by the way. Uh, and uh, the analog discovery with the audio analyzer suite and say, if you're interested uh, and you know what you're doing, well, uh, go ahead and download the software and try it. If you're not interested in the uh, software, but you just kind of like to keep up with this area, well, I suggest you subscribe to the Blue Glow Electronics channel and watch Mark. He has promised to put up some videos soon on uh, a rebuild of, a, of an entire audio uh, test bench that he had started some months or years ago, and uh, when the software became unavailable, I think he had decided to to uh, abandon that project, but he's now picked it back up. So anyway, thanks to all of those people. Thanks to you for watching. Uh, kudos to uh, Steve Gutenberg, who, by the way, does not believe that this amplifier is uh, 10,000 times worse than his, the $250,000 one that he, uh, that, that he also listened to. In fact, I think he kind of liked this one. So do I. So thanks for watching. Take a, a watch for some new videos in the future. And uh, please, as you go forward, uh, have a nice day.